Back in the 1950s, Elvis' overseas albums were often quite different to the American versions. In some cases, they had different cover, in some cases, they had different tracks, and in some cases, both. In this video, we're going to be looking at one such example. I'll be showing you albums from three different countries, the US, the UK, and Japan. All the same album, but just different in some way. Most of my Elvis vinyl collection is made up of records from those three countries. Japan, because that's where I live. The UK, because that's where I'm from. And the US, because for me, those are the ones to have. Anyway, the album I'm going to be talking about and showing is Loving You, released in July 1957 in the US. The movie came out a few days later. This is a stereo copy, so clearly it's not from the 1950s, but it will do for the purposes of this video. And Loving You was unusual for a couple of reasons. It was the first time that they released an album in America with a full head and shoulders shot like that. It was also Elvis' first soundtrack LP, although all the songs from the movie fit neatly onto one side. On the other side, they gave us, as it says here, five well-known popular ballads. That cover there kind of reminds me of the first album in that you have some black and white pictures and some sleeve notes. And musically, it's kind of reminiscent of the Something For Everybody album in that you have a ballad side and a rhythm side because most of the music from Loving You is actually rock and roll music. And of course, you've got the five well-known popular ballads on side two. It also reminds me of the first album in that you have two collections of songs recorded for different purposes. You have the movie songs, of course, and the ballads, whereas on the first album you had the um, newer songs recorded at RCA Victor and the older songs recorded at um, Sun Records in Memphis. So what about these five well-known popular ballads? How well-known, how popular were they? Well, the first one we've got is Blueberry Hill, and that one goes all the way back to 1940, even though most people probably associate that song with uh, Fats Domino. The next song, True Love, to me that sounds like a song that predates even um, Blueberry Hill. But in fact, when Elvis recorded it in 1957, it was only a year old. It had been done in 1956 by Bing Crosby and um, Grace Kelly in the movie High Society. For me, it might be one of his Elvis's better ballad performances from the 1950s, but I'm just not really a big fan of the song itself. The third one is Don't Leave Me Now, and this one was actually recorded, uh, sorry, written for Elvis. He was the first one to record it. So I think the uh, description well-known and popular, probably stretching the definition of both words a little bit, uh, a little bit far, I think. And in fact, I don't think that song has ever really become popular among fans or well-known among the public, even though he um, would include it in his next movie, Jailhouse Rock. The next one, Have I Told You Lately That I Love You, is certainly is a well-known popular ballad. I always think of the uh, Hank Williams version. I think that was the first version I ever heard. But it was also recorded by at least a couple of other rock and rollers. Uh, Ricky Nelson did it in 57, and uh, Eddie Cochran also recorded it as well. And the last song is I Need You So. Now, you might think that's not uh, a well-known popular ballad, but in fact, it was a number one R&B hit for its composer, Ivory Joe Hunter, who was one of Elvis's uh, idols, of course. And it's worth comparing the two versions. They're very, very different. Um, of course, Ivory Joe Hunter's version is great, very well performed. But I think Elvis actually sounds the more needy of the two. So anyway, that's the uh, American version. Let's have a look at one from the UK. In the UK, Love and You was actually Elvis's first RCA LP. The first two albums came out on the HMV label. And Loving You is actually a 10-inch LP, looking like that. The back cover is different to the American one. You've got different photos there, and the sleeve notes are also different. Because it's a 10-inch LP, you've got fewer songs on there, and they only included one song from the ballad side, and that was True Love. The other four songs all appeared on an EP at a later date. Four songs from this album were actually released on singles, not just Loving You and Teddy Bear, but also party and got a lot of living to do. That one got to number two in the charts. These old covers, by the way, they um, actually have the dates when they were printed on the back. So this one has 10, 
1060 at the bottom there, so presumably this copy is from around 1960. So the UK release was significantly different from the American version, but the Japanese version was even more different. Take a look at that cover. This is a 12 inch LP, totally unique front cover there. Very popular title with collectors. Not only is the front cover different, but the back cover is also different. Different photographs. You get the lyrics on there. You do get a little bit of text in Japanese, but that is basically referring to the photographs in the uh, on the back there. So side two has very different songs to the American version. It does retain two of the five ballads. Blueberry Hill starts the side and Have I Told You Lately That I Love You is the last one. But right in the middle there, you've got Jailhouse Rock, Treat Me Nice, and That's When Your Heartaches Begin. So this album came out in 1958, January 1958. But by that point, eight of the, sing eight of the songs had already been released on singles. So there's 12 songs on there. Eight of them had already been on singles. So Lonesome Cowboy and Loving You came out in July 57. Then in September, you had uh, Teddy Bear with That's When Your Heartaches Begin. Uh, then you had um, Jill Ash Rock Treat Me Nice in November 57. And Have I Told You Lately That I Love You uh, and Mean Woman Blues in December 57. So by the time the album came out, there were only four new songs on there. The missing four songs, uh, sorry, the missing three songs, the missing three ballads, they would later appear on an EP along with the song Playing for Keeps. Now I do actually have an alternate version of this cover. So if you look carefully at the text over here on the right, you can see it says Elvis and Loving You in red and yellow. But then in white text down there, it says from the Paramount, Elvis Presley sing songs from the How Wallace production, Loving You, etc., etc. But if you look at this one here, this copy has the same text, only in black letters. Okay, so same cover in every way, except that text is in a different color. This particular version here is from 1961, and um, a, a fellow collector I know has another copy from 1962. This one, this particular copy is from 1961 as well. Like I said, the album was released in 1958, but it was available right up until 1962 when the album was reissued in this cover, in mono and also in stereo. So the album was never deleted, which uh, is quite surprising given how difficult it is to find. And I do also have one of the singles from the album. And uh, it's actually in this cover here. I'll show you the single and then I'll tell you what the cover is all about. So this one has Loving You on that side and Lonesome Cowboy on that side. And you can see down there, there's a little circular stamp and it's got a date there in the middle you see it says 33.520 that's may the 20th 1958 uh yeah eight years before i was born so 58 and the text on there it's a little bit easier to see on the other side the text at the top says it's a sample and then at the um, bottom um sorry it says um, tax exempt at the top and then at the bottom, it says Yokohama Tax Office. So the records were made in Yokohama. And that's why it's got the Yokohama Tax Office on there. The cover here is a cover that they used for in-store, what would you call them? In-store demonstration listening records, as it says here, in the black text here. So sometimes you can find records like that with the stamp, with the tax exempt stamp, and in this green demonstration listening copy sleeve. So that's just a couple of examples of how the record companies overseas would change the albums back in the 1950s. After albums came out of the army, I think there was much more uniformity of uh, releases across the whole world. But that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Cheers.